Come on, somebody. All you got is a hallelujah this morning. All you got to do is lift up a shout from the Lord to God. He said, today we're going to cry out. Today there is a cry of a nation. There is a cry of a people. He said, hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Salvation coming on the King of God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. He is wonderful. He's so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Go ahead and give God a shout of praise for what He's doing, for what He's doing, for what He's fixing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, like, the praise be continually on my lips this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All I've got in my soul is a hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we lift up a hallelujah. I don't care what we came in with. I don't care how broken we feel. But this morning, God, I'm giving you a hallelujah because I got breath inside my lungs this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right where you're at, in the name of Jesus, Father, I just pray that your spirit is already in the room this morning. Your spirit is already dwelling in a house this morning. So, Father, I ask that you just continue to move, continue to sweep, God, continue to clean out some things, continue to rearrange some things. God, that your Holy Spirit penetrates the heart of your people this morning, cleanse their mind, get their mind on you, Jesus. God, get their focus on you, Jesus, because God is in the room and he sees you right where you're at this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us, God. Thank you for choosing victorious life to be a dwelling place, God. Let us be stewards of your presence this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church said, amen, amen. Can you give it up for this incredible praise and worship team? Thank you, thank you, Brother Sweeney. Thank you, Watch your crew. It's good to have you. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This morning, you may be seated. As Bishop Stephen already said, Brother or Bishop Lee is out on assignment this morning, but we continue to lift up and pray for him as he travels and is doing kingdom work. So whenever you think about it, whether if you're in your prayer closet and you're just thinking about Bishop Lee, if you're driving to work, think about Bishop Lee and Lady Lee. Continue to lift him up in prayer. Continue to pray for the body. Continue to pray for the mind that God will continue to bless and move in them because this is not an easy task that he always takes on. But we know God is anointed and appointing him to go out and reach the nation. And I'm so thankful that we get to see God's fulfillment right here. So thank you, Lady Lee, for being here. We love Bishop Lee. And if y'all are first time visitors, I saw we had some hands. Please, please, please come back. He's a lot taller than I am. So you'll, you, I promise you don't want to miss him. No, but he's an amazing man of God, amazing word. So you will be blessed just by being here, I'm telling you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to give you our text this morning, but we're going to go, some, go through some things before we get there. But it's Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16, starting at verse 7. Genesis chapter 16, starting at verse 7 through 13. But before we get there, I want to tell you where I've been in this word. Because it, this was, I, I felt like, you know, God birthed the word in me. And, and when he birthed the word in me, I was like, okay, God, whenever you have me to preach on a Sunday morning, this is going to be so smooth. Elder Dean, that never happens, does it? It never seems so smooth because, yes, God gave you a word, but you got to put some work into it. So as, as I was preparing this word and God gave me direction, I, can, I started to pray and I started to study and I started to dive into the word. And the direction that I felt it was supposed to go was not the way it needed to go. And so I was trying to make this point tied to this point and this scripture coming. And I was like, Lord, this is not coming together like it should. So I continued to press in and I began to pray, Sister Lynette. I began to pray for, for guidance, wisdom, and help. 
because y'all are intimidating because you are, you are Bible knowing and you are anointed and I do not take it lightly to be on this platform. So I said, God, I need your help. God, I need your, your presence. I need your anointing. I need everything that I need to, to, to put the word together. And as I begin to ask the Lord, are you sure about this? Yeah, that's how I felt too. I started to ask the Lord, are you sure? Are you sure I'm supposed to speak? Are you sure this is the word you've given me? And the more I asked, Lord, are you sure? The more I started seeing the hurt in the room. The more I said, God, are you sure this is what we're supposed to speak on? I'm supposed to preach this word. The more I kept seeing hurt in people. I kept seeing attack people. I would get on social media and things I would scroll on by. I began to see the hurt they were going through, the attack they were experiencing. And as I was working down south this week, I was I entered into a sub shop and I'm sitting there, I'm looking at the menu, trying to figure out what I want to eat. And, and honestly, I'm looking at the menu, but I'm saying, God, I need your help. Not to order, but for the word. God, I need your help. I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. And the lady behind the counter caught my eye. And when I looked, she had a tattoo across her forearm that read broken. And right then and there, I said, God, I know this is the word you gave me because my heart began to break. And I'm not an emotional person, but my spirit was breaking. And I began to pray, and my coworker started asking me something. And I said, man, I'm so sorry, because I heard him repeat it. I said, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't. I'm thinking about Sunday morning. I'm thinking about God's people. I'm thinking about the hurt in the room. He said, I know it, man. I see it all over your face. This is a man that, that, you know, we don't, I know, but not 100% like well deep, no, like a personal relationship. But he said, I see it all over you. And what God revealed to me is that there are people that go through brokenness, that go through hurt, that go through trials and tribulations, that are in, the, they're on platforms, they're on wherever, they're in this room, and we just pass them by. And we just pass them by. This morning, the title of my message this morning is he sees you in it. He sees you in it. Let us pray. So Father, today, God, God, it's not words of Jeremy, but God, it's of you, Father. I pray that you open your people's heart and their mind today to receive your word, God, that if there's any brokenness in the room, God, that if there's any hurt or pain and suffering, if there's any rejection in the room, Father, that God, you are in the room to do the mending work, Holy Spirit. God, I pray as the word goes forth, God, that it's not words of me, but God, let it be words of your Holy Spirit that just pour out this morning. And God, give us grace and mercy through everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Like I said, guys, this is a familiar text. Genesis chapter 16, starting at verse 7, but I want to give you the backstory before we get there. Most of us are familiar with the text of Abram and Sarai. We know that God gave them a promise for, that they would conceive a child. But Sarah, in her waiting, got impatient. Has anybody here ever gotten impatient waiting on God? I can test, yeah. We've got impa she got impatient waiting on God, and she came up with her own plan to fix the problem. She came up with her own plan to fix the problem. She said, Abram, I figured it out. Abram, since I haven't had a child as an heir for you, what we're going to do is we're going to get Hagar, my servant, to have a child for us. Right then and there, there should have been a red flag because this was the beginning of a reality show or a lifetime movie, and it does not end up well for the man in this mix. Every lifetime movie, the man got to go. He's done for and Abram should have put his foot down, but instead he said, okay, here I am. This was not God's promise for them. This was not God's promise for them. But the Bible tells us that Hagar becomes pregnant. But after that, the Bible says that Hagar began to despise Sarah. She began to despise Sarah. And because of, because of this, Sarah began to mistreat Hagar. It doesn't specify how, but I can only imagine the time that we're in, Sister Helen, is that the emotional, the physical, and the verbal abuse that was taking place. And I, I pictured it, and I heard it like this when I was studying it. I pictured Sarah saying, Hagar, 
You're worthless. Hagar, you're a nothing. Hagar, your life is meaningless. The only reason you're even pregnant is because I allowed it. Hagar, you are so worthless that your father, the Pharaoh, gave you up to us. Hagar was a princess in Egypt, but she began to have no value when she was given up to servitude. So I can only imagine what was the attack. And the Bible says that she was mistreated so badly that Hagar fled. Like I said, we're familiar with this text, but Hagar fled. Hagar, who has been used, rejected, mistreated, and now she's running. Reused, rejected, mistreated, and now she's running. Hagar, whose name in Hebrew literally means to flee. It is in her nature from birth to flee. It is in her nature. I don't know why you would name somebody like this, but it was already birthed into her that she is to run. She is to run. She was used by Sarah just to have a kid for her and Abram. She was rejected by Abram in chapter five or verse five where he said, you know what? Do what you want to with your servant. I don't even care. Go on, do with what you want to. She was mistreated by Sarah so badly that she ran off into the desert. I wonder how many people in the room today feel like Hagar. I wonder how many people on, online or wherever we're at feel like or can identify with Hagar. You felt used and tossed side to side as soon as people were done with you. You felt hurt and disappointed, talked down to like you're a nobody. You've been rejected by friends, family, loved ones all over. You felt like Hagar. See, there was a time, and, and I, I love to play the drums, and, the, and God has given me a talent because literally I tried when I was a kid. It never worked out. I never had rhythm. It was awful. But when God stepped in and he anointed me and he called me, I could play. And it was a whole nother level of things. But I, I began to play and I played with the worship team. And as I was playing with this team and we would have great worship sets, we would go to events and play. We had a great and amazing time and the Holy Spirit would just move and we was invited there. But as soon as the event, as soon as worship was over, I felt rejected. As soon as whatever we were doing was done with, I felt like I was done with. I felt like I didn't, they didn't want me there. They, didn't need, they, they, they had a plan for the, for the moment, but as soon as it was all done with, we're done. And I remember after playing one set or practicing one set that I was sitting there and, and I, we get done practicing and everybody just kind of does their thing and I'm standing by myself. And I, and I remember thinking I felt needed Lately, but not wanted. I felt needed, but not wanted. See, people need you for your gift. People need you for the gift that God has placed inside of you. People need you, but as soon as their gain is over, as soon as their time with you is done, they just cast you to the side. As soon as that need is met, it's all over with. And I remember feeling this way, and I, I remember saying, all right, God, I'm going to show them. I'll just quit. Let them text me next week. Let them find out. I, I just won't talk to them. Let them see how it's going to go without the, the drummer boy back there. Yes, sir. And I remember feeling this way like I wanted to run. And if we're being honest, church, as soon as we find ourselves hurt or we feel hurt or we feel not needed, it's easy for us to take off and run instead of dealing with the problem that is right in front of us. It's easier for us to take off and flee than it is to face the issues. Let them figure out what to do. I'm out. But God would never allow it. Whether you are, wherever you are, whether it be work, school, church, home, wherever it is, as soon as the, we, think that we feel like things get hard or we feel the tension or we feel attacked and we feel hurt, our first thought is to run. We run to a new job because our boss offended us and we're jumping around. That's why we're not stable. We run to a new church because the pastor let the youth pastor preach on a Sunday and we didn't like that. Just kidding, y'all support me really well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but we run to a new church because we didn't like what was said and we didn't like what was happening. Instead of seeking God, we take off and run and we never face the issues and those problems follow us right to the next place. It follows us to our next job. It follows us to our next church. It follows to our next assignment because it's not God's timing. 
We run to a new wife because we feel like we can do better. We feel like ours ain't good enough anymore. We run, ladies, to a new husband because why? You feel like, all right, you've had enough of this one. He ain't doing what you want him to or he ain't acting a certain way. And so you try to find stability in somebody else. But you continue, instead of seeking after the Lord, you seek after things of this world instead of dealing with the issue. What We run wherever we feel we need to go, however far it is, whatever we need to do to get away from it all. We run. And I don't care how old or how young you are in this room. If you always run from the problem and never deal with it, it is going to continue to follow after you. It's going to continue. Usain Bolt is known as the fastest man in the world, but if he, he cannot outrun the battle of his mind. He can outrun the thought process, the hurt that he's dealt with, the pain that has came in. I don't care how, how ready he gets for it. You cannot outrun what you don't deal with. You can't outrun it. Holly tells me all those time, all the time that like there's, there's buttons that I know if I push, you get a little upset. Ain't that right? I'm redheaded and I tell a lot of people I got a BC and so I'm still working. I'm in the process but Holly said, I know what buttons to push to get you there. Or I, when somebody says something, she's like, I know what happened because you haven't dealt with the problem. See, church, until you get to the root of it and you deal with the root cause, that thing is going to continue to grow inside of you. And until you cut it off, until you get rid of it, it is going to continue to plague and affect you. And it will continue to cause you to run and never deal with the issue in front of you. We run just like Hagar ran. Picking up chapter 16, verse 7, if you're with me, chapter 16, verse 7. It says, then the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I am running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. Could you imagine, Lady T, Lady Tracy? I love you. Miss Tracy, could you imagine getting talked down to, getting ridiculed, getting hurt, getting home, and you tell Bishop Stephen, like, hey, this is, this is what I'm dealing with. He says, go back and submit. I know you. <laughs> let's just be honest so I want you to put in your perspective what Hagar is hearing right now like this is a bold statement from the Lord go back to your mistress return to her and submit to her verse 10 the angel added I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count the angel of the Lord said also to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son and you will name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard of your misery and he will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. In verse 13, she gave the name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. See, God has seen you right where you are at, church. He is the God that has seen you. He is seeing you. He has not left you, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but he sees you right in your misery. He's the God who sees you. He's the God who sees you. And see, sometimes, church, when we take off and run before we get to even the promise of God. Hagar is fleeing. Hagar has bolted out of here. And yet she doesn't know that there is a promise inside of her. There is a promise in her life. And so many times, church, that's how we do. Before we find out the promise, before we figure out, that we, before we see the goodness of God, we flee and we run. We flee the hand of God before we know that God has a, a, a calling and a promise for our life. Hagar took off and ran in her pain before she even knew that God had a plan and an assignment for her. The Lord said to Hagar, 
go back and submit. And don't worry, I will increase your descendants so much there'll be too many to count. God just gave her a promise. And also, the baby you are carrying now will be called Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard of your misery. Church, the Lord has heard you cry out. He has heard of your pain. He has heard of your suffering. He has heard you in the midnight hour. God is hearing you. Don't run because God is hearing you. Don't run because he's the God that sees you. But we run. And as I was reading this text, we hear the promise of the Lord come to Hagar But I did not understand why he referred to Hagar's son, Ishmael, as a wild donkey of a man. I'm like, God, you have some, you created everything, and that's the description you gave this man. I don't know how I'd feel about it right off the rip. I'm not going to lie to you. But as I began to study why the Lord called him a wild donkey of the man, of a man. See, you can't, you can't tame a wild donkey. See, you can't tame something that grew up in the wilderness. You can't tame something that grew up in the wild. See, church, let me put it this way. You can't be tamed when you're free in the Lord. He said, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So you can't be tamed by the world when you have the Lord pressing into you and pushing into you. Her, her descendants would not only be multiplied, would not only be a numerous amount, but they will be free in Jesus' name. He said he'd be a wild donkey of a man. He would be free. The Bible, one one translation says freer than free. That he wouldn't grow up in slavery. He wouldn't be born in bondage. He wouldn't be held by shackles and chains. But no, Ishmael and the rest of them will be free. There is a promise for your life to be free. There's a promise for your life to be free. You say, Pastor Jeremy, what's that got to do with me? I'm jumping ahead, but the Bible says that when we were born, we were sinners and Christ died for us and we were a slave to sin. But when Jesus enters into your presence, Jesus enters into your wilderness, you are free in his name. See, this is why the text makes sense now. Because you can't be tamed when you have the Holy Spirit. You can't be tamed and tainted by the world when you have the Holy Spirit. But God said, you are a free generation. You are a free people. You are a free priesthood. You are free in Jesus' name. You see, Hagar felt used, rejected, and not needed. Used, rejected, and not needed. But we see God is telling her to go back and face her pain, face her problem. And if you are obedient to me and do what I say, I will bless you. I will, there will be a blessing for your life. And he even says too numerous to count. There is a promise, but you have to make a decision. Hagar had to make a decision. Do I continue to run or do I obey God and go back? That's one thing I love about the Lord. He lets us make our own decisions. We see Jonah made a decision. He ran, ended up in a large fish. Got back to his promise. But he allows us to make the decision. So we see that Hagar has the decision to make. Do I continue to run or do I go back to my mistress? Do I go back to this pain? And it may seem easier. The easiest thing to do is to quit and to give up. It truly seems easier that way to give up and flee. But how hard is it to flee when you know that God has a promise for you? When you know there is a promise waiting when you get back, how hard is it to keep running, to keep fleeing what God has called you to do, who God has called you to be? Yes, it may hurt. Yes, there may be hard times, but we know that God's promises are true and his promises are yes and amen. God is not a God that he should lie, but his promises are yes. So she has a decision to make. If Hagar runs, she will die out here. There's no provision in the desert. Like this spring is about it, and if she keeps going, it's it. So if she continues to run, she will die. If she continues to run, she's disobeying the Lord. If she continues to run, she is killing the promise that God has for her life and her generations to come if she continues to run. Church, this is the same thought process we should have. 
if I continue to run, if I quit now, am I trusting God? If I don't deal with the issue in front of me, my family, my friends, somebody else is going to have to deal with it for me. That's why we see generational curses plaguing other generations because we haven't broken them right where they are But we because we don't deal with it. We don't deal with the problem at hand. So my family, my friends, somebody else is going to have to deal with it. If I continue to run into the wilderness, I'm giving the enemy a foothold into my life. When you find yourself out of the will of God, trust me, the enemy's coming in like a flood, and that's the wilderness place that he thrives to be. But she has the decision to make. If she goes back, God can save her. If she goes back, God is sending her back with a promise. See, God is not sending her back to be mistreated. God is not sending her back to be ridiculed. God is not sending her back to be mocked or or beat on or yelled at. No, God is sending her back not in pain, but in provision. Provision is saying that God, that God has, that Hagar will have everything that she needs with Abram and Sarai. She will have everything she has need of. There is provision for her there. And if Hagar goes back, she will live and her promise will live. Can I just be honest, church? We run before we do, we, we allow God to move. We, we try to flee, knowing there's a promise, knowing there's a purpose. Holly and I were discussing this word last night and, and we were talking about where we've been and how we've been broken and other things that come up in life. And it made me think on when I, when I was 15 years old and I went to a prison to visit my stepdad and, you know, you pick up the phone to talk through the glass and to hurt my mother. He said, hey, son, before you go, I want you to know you're adopted. I want you to know she's been, your mother hasn't told you the truth your whole life. Everybody knows except you. And ever since I was studying this word, ever since I began to get in this word, those thoughts and that process became back to my mind. The things I thought I dealt with, I just pushed down. Church, when we push things down, we're not dealing with it. And it continues to affect us. It continues to hurt us. And it continues to have pain in our life because we're not dealing with it. We're not releasing it to God. God, am I trusting you or am I not trusting you? But I thought I dealt with it. So Holly and I were discussing this message and we were talking about broken things and fleeing and, and the message. And there was times while we were here that we, felt that we, we, we kept feeling like we needed to go. That the enemy was telling us your time is up. You need to leave. You need to let somebody else take your place. You need to get out of here. There is other things, but you can't stay here. We should give up. Our time is done. There are more qualified people than you to to reach a generation. There's more qualified people with better sermon titles, better outfits, better looks, better all this that can reach a generation, that can relate to a generation. We kept hearing these thoughts and we had opportunities that come. Can I tell you the devil will send you opportunities too? He's going to send you an opportunity to get you out of the will of God. So opportunities were coming. We were hitting, getting calls. Hey, I put your name in to be a youth pastor here. And I'm like, I'm going to pray about it, but I don't think so. Hey, hey, we got a call. I need you to be a family life pastor. Hey, our church is looking for a drummer. Hey, we just want you to come here. We love to have you and Holly here because y'all offer so much. I'm like, oh, you don't know us very well. (laughs) We just love the Lord and that's where we're at. But I'm like, you don't know. And the more we began to hear these thoughts, the more the opportunities came. Holly and I found ourselves asking the question, God, are we done yet? Is our season, is it time for us to pack up and go? And we found ourselves on our knees to the Lord. And God said, I have put put you in a place for provision. I have put you in a place of promise. I have put you in a place for a generation. I have put you in a place to grow you. I have put you in a place that you need to be. Stop running to the desert when God has called you to a place of provision. Stop running away from God's promises. And so we heard these things, but God has called us. See, because the enemy has wants you to quit. The enemy wants you to flee and cancel the promise of God. That's the enemy's, that's his motive to ki- still kill and destroy. So yes, he wants to cancel the promise of God. And I believe God is wanting someone to know in this season 
It's not, he's not done with you yet. That your time is not up. That you can stop running. That you can stop searching. That you can get back to the place that God has called you to. It doesn't matter who is to the left of you or to the right of you. Who has left your circle. Who has left your environment. Because God has called you to a place and he will provide you. That's why they said Jehovah Jireh is the provider. Because he will provide all you have need of right in the season you are in. In season and out of season. He will provide for you right where you are. He, and I'm telling you church, he is not something we take lightly but he is the provider in all we need he's the God who sees you Wednesday night Holly preached and she amazing sermon but she preached on the access code and access to the father through the son Jesus and afterwards she called me she, she said hey he didn't know I was going to do this but she had me come up and she had the students pray when we were at fall retreat this year Y'all know about my accident, but when we were, the more I moved, a lot of times it, my, my ankle hurts, my back starts to hurt, and I don't, I'm 31 years old, I'm not going to stop anytime soon. So I just deal with pain, and I keep riding, like they had me do a cartwheel, and I thought I was going to die when I got up, but... But I keep going, I keep praying, I keep seeking. But Holly had me come up, and she had one of, the, uh, one of our leaders lay hands on my ankle, and we begin to pray. See, in your promise that God can still do a work, he is, he is the healer in all you need. And so the next morning when I got up, I'm not telling you it's perfect, but I tell you this week has been the best week of my life when I'm standing on my own two feet. Can I tell you that God's promises that he can heal you, he can meet you where you're at, he is the provider you need, he is everything that you need, and he is the God that hears you, he is the God that sees you, and he is right here in the room this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being the God we need. Thank you for meeting us, God, in our brokenness, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, just give it, get five minutes of praise. Go again and give God a shout right where you are because he sees you in the room. He sees you what you need. He sees you in the desert, and he is meeting you right where you are today. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is the God who sees you. It doesn't matter who is around you. It doesn't matter what you've been through. The Bible says, 1 Peter 1 and 2, it says it like this. It says, God the Father knew you and chose you a long time ago. And his spirit made you holy. He said that God the Father, so whenever you feel like quitting, God the Father handpicked you. When you feel like running, God the Father saw you and chose you. He said while you were in your mother's womb, I was singing songs over to you. I was creating something. I was forming something. It ain't broken anymore. Uh, he took the clay the, the, the potter's wheel, the, the marred pieces, and he began to put them back together just like he can do in your life. Why? Because that's the God who sees you. He's the one that hears you in your misery. He's the one that hears you in your doubt. He's the one that hears you in this season. He takes the broken things and he puts them back together. He takes the lost things and meets them where they're at. He will find you in the desert. He will find you in the wilderness. Why? Because that's the God. He is El Roy. the God who sees you. That's who he is. That's who he is in the name of Jesus. He's the God who sees you in your brokenness, in your pain, in your suffering, in your misery. He is the God who sees you. He's the God who sees you. He's the God who sees you. We're fixing the clothes. You can fix the clothes. I promise, I promise. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for seeing us this morning. Thank you for being here this morning, Holy Spirit. But see, God, church, God's not going to leave you in the wilderness. He's going to send you back with a promise. But one thing I loved about Hagar, and I continue to study about Hagar, the one thing I really love about Hagar 
is that she was given up into slavery. She was a princess who was given up to as a servant. But when God stepped in, he started to rewrite some things. When he told her to go back to her masters, it wasn't to be a servant anymore because see, she was born into slavery. But when she had a relationship with the father, he didn't call her servant. He didn't call her slave. No, he called her daughter. He called her heir. He called her, that's who you are this morning. See, I don't know if you felt lost or broken or wherever you are at in life. But when God called you, it was son, it was daughter. He didn't leave you in the wilderness, but she was, and she didn't go back the same. She was escorted back by the father, the Lord God Almighty, Elroy, the one who sees her. If you can, please stay on your feet as we get ready to close. As we get ready to close. Church, I don't care if you're broken. I don't care if you're lost. I don't care what your hurt is this morning, what your pain is, but the healer is in the room. The one who sees you is in the room. The one that's gonna meet you right where you are is in the room. Your time is not done with. Your season is not over. It is not time to tuck tail and run from the enemy. It's time to stand. The Bible says in Proverbs that the wicked run when nobody's chasing him. He said, but the bold stand firmly like a lion. This morning there is a lion in the tribe of Judah and he is going to roar in your life if you will let him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you can say, Pastor Jeremy, I've been broken. I've been hurt and I felt lost. I felt rejected. All I felt like doing was running. If that's you, will you raise your hand? Amen, amen, yeah, yeah, yeah. God sees you, God sees you. Yeah, he's the God that's looking at you right now. Amen, amen, amen. Will you come down to this altar so we can pray? Will you make that next step? The prayer team's gonna meet you here. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed because God is seeing you right where you are. He is the only one that can mend you. He is the only one that can fix you and put you back together again. In the name of Jesus, the healer, the provider is in the room for your brokenness. Though, though you felt rejected, Elroy E is in the room. Let us pray. You can pray right where you're at. Stretch your hand towards somebody if you want to pray. Pray for the person beside you. Because just like the prayer that's going to help my ankle that I'm walking in the healing, is the prayer that's going to help the people on your road. The prayer that's going to help at this altar. Because the Bible said in Leviticus, let the fire of the altar never burn out. See, God is going to set the altar on fire. The things that you are dealing with will no longer define you and bind you up. In Jesus' name. are more than able you are more than able you are more than are more than able who am I to deny what the Lord can do I know what he can do say so you are more you are more than able say so you are more than able. Say you are. You are more than able. Say you are more. You are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do?
Lord, just say it again. You are more. You are more than able. Yes, you are. Say you are more. What the Lord can do is gonna happen just at the way they go through. He's gonna move, he's gonna move. Say, can you imagine with all of the faith in the room? What the Lord can do, what the Lord can do is gonna happen. It's gonna happen just at the way they go through. He's gonna move, he's gonna move, he's gonna move. Say, can you Follow the faith with all of the faith in the room. What the Lord can do, what the Lord can do. Say it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Just at the way, just at the through. way, He's make gonna it move. He's gonna move. He's gonna move. He's gonna move. Say he's gonna move. 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 He's gonna move Cause you are more than able You are more than able You are more than able Say, who am I? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Hey, you are, you are more than. Done with me yet. There's so much more to this story. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. There's so much more to this story. God's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. See, there's so much more. There's so much more to this story. You're not done with me yet. He's not done with me. 
much more to this story You're not done with me yet He's not done with you yet He's not done with you yet Cause there's so much more to your story He's not done with
Cause he's able. You know he's able, church. Give God a shout of praise for what he has done in the room today. If you know that he is able to continue to move in your life when you leave, give God the highest praise this morning. Because he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that we ask or think, he is able, church. Father, I pray for a congregation this morning, whether they're watching online or in the room, if they're outside in the hallways, if they're upstairs in a children's church, wherever they are at, God, when we leave this place, God, that we go out to the highways and the byways, and we are carriers because you are doing something new, that there are the broken things that have been made up because you are able to do everything we have need of. And when we leave this place, God, continue to move continue to breathe on your people Lord Father we continue to lift up all the needs everyone that has a need we continue to lift up Bishop Lee on his assignment Lady Lee on her assignments God God and we say it is done and it is finished in the name of Jesus we pray this morning and the church said Amen Amen we love you be safe as you're going we can't wait to see you Wednesday night at 7 Stop out front, support 2x2 Ministries in their pay sale. We love you. Hope you have a great week.